If all you do is feel good passive treatments, then yes, maybe you are hurting your patients in the long term. Everyone needs to feel better, but most patients go to physiotherapy to get rid of pain. They care more about stopping their pain than fixing their disability. Well, at first. As physiotherapists, we may focus too much on pain relief and not enough on functional recovery. I worry that physiotherapy is becoming known more for passive treatments like TENS machines and laser rather than expert exercise instruction and skilled manual therapy. Why not do both? Because there's a conflict between what patients want for pain relief and what physios aim for in functional recovery. These are two different treatment plans with incompatible goals. Several factors contribute to this problem. Let me explain. Number one, patient expectations. People often focus on immediate needs like pain relief because most people operate on a simple limbic system motivations like pain, hunger, sex. Two, there's a business side. Some physios use repeated passive treatments as their cash cow. This can be good for money in a temporary feel-good treatments, but ethically, grinding through some patient's insurance and never addressing the underlying problems seems wrong. Some accuse chiropractors of this with their model of repeated adjustments. Three, pain relief. Even if you are really only focused on pain relief, then patient satisfaction and patient happiness can be tough to achieve and even more difficult to sustain. Our society is obsessed with happiness, from FOMO social media to the self-help industry. And I'm skeptical about physiotherapy's ability to really deliver on significant pain relief. Compared to the drugs available from doctors and illegal drugs, physio is a minor player in the pain relief game. I'm just saying that no drug addict is going to break into a physio clinic to steal its TENS machine and ice. The goal of this video is to highlight this issue, suggest solutions, and encourage physiotherapists to think critically. The video has three parts the patient perspective, the physiotherapist perspective, and bridging the gap. And if you watch to the end, there's a bonus solution that ties everything together. Section 1, the patient perspective. We need to understand what motivates our patients. Being an adult means seeing, being able to see things from other people's point of view. Patients often care more about pain relief than function because they're scared and want quick, quick results. As physios, we see patients with fractures and surgeries all the time, but for those patients, it's often their first time in the medical system. Remember how nervous you were on your first day compared to now? We need to empathize with our patients. We should acknowledge their pain and address their immediate concerns. Even small injuries can make patients feel disabled. Fear can be as big a problem as their physical injury. The solution is to educate our patients. We need to teach them two things. First, self-applied pain management. This includes relative rest, activity is tolerated, and the use of heat or ice at home. Second, active home exercises. These are active, pain-free exercises to empower patients to move towards their recovery goals. Section two, the physiotherapist perspective. Physiotherapists face two main problems. We are asked to see too many patients in too little time, and we need to balance effective business practices with the needs of our patients. I have two practical solutions. Be organized and efficient clinically, and we need to franchise business approach. Let me explain. First, being organized with your assessments, your treatments, and your paperwork lets you see lots of patients while being attentive, efficient, and thorough. I have videos for evaluating the upper and lower body, um, but if they don't show up, then I haven't finished them yet. For a simplified approach to physio diagnosis and treatment, watch this video here. For paperwork, I have this book here uh, available as an ebook or a paperback. Lastly, physiotherapy needs to move away from the one on one treatment model and move towards a physician clinic office style utilizing assistance. It's efficient, it's, it's effective, and it's scalable. Second, read Michael Gerber's book, The E-Myth Revisited. This is the entrepreneurial myth. To set up your physio business as a franchise, use standard operating procedures for every process to ensure consistency. Standardize office procedures and clinical services. Use systems. Your clinic should be system dependent rather than people dependent to ensure consistency and predictability. Train your team to implement your system. Focus on continuous innovation and measurable results. 
you need the business revenue results, you need the positive clinical results, and you need a, an empowered, collaborative, flexible team. Section three, bridging the gap between pain relief and functional recovery. To connect patients' desire for pain relief with physiotherapists' focus on functional recovery, we need an open and honest communication. I have two tangible recommendations here. First, collaborative goal setting. Work with your patients to set realistic and achievable goals for their recovery. When they talk about their pain, bring them around to that functional loss. What are you not able to do? What would you be, do be able to do uh, if that pain was more tolerable? Second, measure success differently. I know everyone uses the 0 to 10 pain scale. Some places even require it. Sometimes we have to use some functional outcome measures like the Oswestry Disability Index for back pain or the Quick Dash for arm function. Instead of doing an entire test, maybe just pull out some useful phrase. So instead of the entire neck disability index, focus on what's most important or bothersome for the patient, like self-care or lifting. Then recheck that one item as an, uh, as an outcome measure instead of redoing the entire uh, outcome uh, test or asking a 0 to 10 pain scale. Since you've made it this far, this is the bonus section, putting it all together. The best treatment approach addresses patient pain and progresses to functional recovery. That's my three-stage treatment approach. There are three treatment categories. We treat for pain, we treat for recovery of motion, and we treat for strength, balance, and mobility. I explain these categories in more detail in my book. Patients move through these stages to regain function. Sometimes they may have a flare-up and return to being a pain patient for a while, but the goal is to progress through these stages to recover function. For pain patients, your approach will focus on First, education. Teach patients how to reduce that irritation and inflammation. Encourage relative rest and moderate activity. This means modifying activities and using self-applied pain relief methods. Two, pain management. Control inflammation with passive modalities like heat or ice at home along with gentle pain-free exercises. This is where those passive clinic modalities may actually become in useful. Three, recovery. As systems lesson, help patients to recover motion, and then later strength, balance, and mobility. In my book, I suggest sticking to this pain patient approach for about four to six weeks before moving on. Always emphasize pain-free activity. I made this video because I'm worried that many physiotherapy clinics prioritize passive treatments like TENS machine and laser over active, active exercises and skilled manual therapy due to the patient demand and business pressures. This is a short-term focus that can negatively impact on patient outcomes and our profession. To address this issue, I came up with this video and this four-part solution. First, understand the patient's perspective. Patients often seek quick pain relief due to fear and anxiety. Physiotherapists should educate patients about self-management techniques and the importance of active exercises. Second, improve the physiotherapy business and clinical model. Increase efficiency through organization and standardization to ensure consistency and effectiveness. Third, Bridge the gap between pain relief and functional recovery. Set collaborative goals with patients. Focus on functional outcomes rather than solely pain scores. Lastly, implement a three-stage treatment plan addressing pain, recovery of motion, strength, balance, mobility. Ultimately, the goal is to provide effective long-term care for patients while maintaining a sustainable business physiotherapy practice. Have you seen this pain relief versus active function controversy? I've worked in several places, so I've seen a variety. Some good, some bad, and we, mean, we need more of the good. This will be good for patient outcomes and good for the physio profession. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. My two books are now available at Amazon. What they don't teach you about documentation in physiotherapy school, a short how-to manual for successful daily note templates, and... From Injury to Recovery Through Exercise, Simple Functional Exercise Progressions for Physiotherapists to Restore Lifting, Standing, Walking. Thank you for your support. Let's have fun watching this neat video together. And by subscribing, you'll be among the first to know when new exciting content arrives. Thank you.